I'm dating this guy and I love him. We're not the same religion, so his mother-in-law absolutely despises me. She hates my guts. But she's crossing the boundaries because she gives me an ultimatum. And guys, I'm going to walk you through this story. It is absolutely insane. My life has abruptly changed since I first met my mother-in-law. Well, should I say future? She's a devoted Muslim and I come from a Christian family, but with very open mind, so normally these thoughts clash. My mother-in-law asked me to change my religion and just accept Islam. And we've told her that's impossible. Still, she insisted. She said that she was afraid of what her friends would say if they found out that her son was married to someone who did not believe, and I quote, the one and true God. I was shocked and hurt. I was raised a Christian for my entire life, and I never thought that my religion would be a problem for my parents' family. I tried to explain that, well, while my religion is somewhat important to me, I would never change it for anyone. But she didn't seem to understand. The problem is, is that she says that this doesn't happen. She will not give a single penny to us. She's the owner of a well-known chain of pharmacies in the city, so she's absurdly wealthy and worries about what people will say. I don't know what to do. I love my boyfriend, but I know if I can stay in a marriage where I'm constantly asked to change who I am. I feel like I'm being forced to choose between my religion and my future, and it's a choice that I really don't want to make. I apologize if this story seems to be very convoluted or makes abrupt changes. I was never good at literature, but this situation is beyond me, so I have to tell it out. A week ago, I had to face one of the biggest challenges of my entire life, and it was upon meeting my future mother-in-law. Well, first, I'll tell you about my fiancé, Ollie, who has been the man of my dreams for as long as I can remember. We studied together in high school, but we never paid attention to each other. It wasn't until after we finished college that we met again and got back in touch. We have a lot in common, you know. We laughed about class memories that brought us closer, and he told me he was engaged a few years ago. But things did not work out because of a problem with his fiance. I did not want to delve any further into the matter, so we continued the subject in one sitting, and... We decided to give it a chance, and after a few months, we decided to formalize everything. Of course, Ollie's family was a mystery. He didn't interact with them much in public, and I only met his mother on a couple of occasions that did not last more than 20 seconds. The lady only gave me brief smiles, and he preferred to go somewhere else. The thing is that Ollie is a Muslim, and he tells me that his family, or rather, his mom, is very strict about it. So... He doesn't want me to interfere with his family. I've told him several times not to worry, as I even had a boyfriend who was a skateboarder and <laughs> believed in bathing only once a week. No wonder that didn't last more than a couple of weeks. So being with a practitioner of Islam is not a bad thing. Besides, everyone believes are to be respected, and it's something that I've lived with since I was born. I was raised Christian. But my parents are very, um, how do you say, liberal-minded? In the sense that, quote, anyone can believe whatever they want. You just mind your own business and that's it. And it's something I've always professed. Ali suffered a bit of bullying for his beliefs in school. And while I never defended him, again, we weren't that close then. I didn't join in on that either, as I felt it was not the right thing to do. All this is just to show how tolerant I can be. I admit I was shocked when Ali asked me to marry him a couple of weeks ago. We've discussed the matter of a wedding, but he always reminded well, me that he was elusive. And what was my surprise when he called me in the morning, telling me that something had happened and that he had to see me ASAP. When we met downtown, he just got on one knee instantly and said he woke up wanting to make me the happiest woman in the world. That for me, ugh, being so cheesy with that stuff, <laughs> almost made me faint. So I didn't think twice. That's when we entered the fiancé stage, and that entailed some changes. We're still very young, and we aren't saying that there's going to be a wedding in the immediate future, but at least there's a commitment to be with each other, and that brings us to a very important point. Families. Ollie knows my family well, and he's had dinner with us and even stayed at my house. My siblings adore him. 
My mother treats him like another son, and that sense, there's no issues. But as I mentioned before, my interactions with his family have been Neil. His family spends his time in Europe for various business, and his mother, the owner of a well-known chain of pharmacies like I've told you before, is the one who runs the family here. He has five siblings, and would you believe I've never met any of them? Ali is the second in the family, but since his older brother is with his father, he's the one who commands the entourage of siblings. Still, he has no say in what happened. The evening was supposed to be quiet at a family dinner, where I was a special guest. Ollie told me that since his previous fiancé, no one else had set foot in that house as his partner, so you can get an idea of the pressure I felt at the time. I was greeted by his younger siblings, who were sweethearts despite being so quiet. And when my mother-in-law appeared, I felt like my legs had turned into noodles. She was a tall woman, very well-groomed with a serious face, but... She did not hesitate to smile at me as soon as she saw me. She took us around the house and showed me the typical pictures of Ali when he was a baby. Even though he was very embarrassed, we continued talking for a while until we had to stop for a moment. As it was a time for the family prayers. I already knew that Ali prayed up to five times a day, so I was going to leave the room to give them their due space. But Ali's mom? She took it to heart. She insisted that I stay for the prayer, but when I told her that I was Christian, it was as if I have offended even their grandparents. She looks at her son and says, we'll talk later. <laughs> and I sat with them for the prayer, something that ended up being very, very awkward. Dinner was tense since, after prayer time, his mother was acting somewhat cold and distant. I talked normally with her brothers until his mother asked me when I would decide to convert to Islam to proceed with the wedding. We told her that we were planning a civil marriage, not very fancy, really, and that's when she took the second offense. He asked me if I was going to continue to profess that religion of lies, and that's when I took offense. I told her not to speak ill on my beliefs, for at no time have I ever offended or mocked those of her family. I swear I was being as polite and political about it as I could, but it seemed like I was talking to a wall. She just kept stressing the fact that their religion was more important as it was the one the man in the relationship had. I told her that it did not matter, trying to seek a bit of support from Ollie himself, but he just kept quiet. He only spoke to say that we had to leave, and that's when the dinner stopped. Yeah, it was very awkward, and no, I did not say goodbye to anyone, something I'm ashamed of to admit. We've been talking about it ever since, as I feel it's a very sensitive issue in our relationship. Every time I bring it up to Ollie, he says that he'll talk to his mother, but the truth is that it's been a week and I have not seen any considerable progress. Although, I don't show it so much to him. The truth is that I'm kind of panicking about it because I know how religious fanatics can be with the whole belief thing. I have an aunt who, well, almost no one in the family speaks to precisely because she is extreme orthodox, to the point of refusing to allow Ali and I to be together in the first place. I don't know if my mother-in-law-to-be will be the same, I hope not. When I told my mom all about this, she told me to think it through and... It got to the point where it was so complex that she even told me to reconsider being with Ollie. Imagine how tough it has to be for her. I mean, who also loves Ollie to put herself in that position and give me advice like that? At first, I was excited about the idea of the wedding and everything, but now I feel my stomach churning. Like, this kind of conflict is going to be a major problem in the future. I know we live in the 21st century, but it still amazes me that there's such intolerant people out there, and it'll complicate a bit of the plans Ollie and I have, not only for the wedding, but for our married life as well. I say this because, in a way, and although it sounds very forward of me to say it, the truth is, is that we were counting on Ollie's mom's support for our expenses. I think I said it before, but Ollie's mom is the owner of several well-known pharmacies around. So, it would not be too far-fetched to think that she would help her son and future daughter-in-law with something to start their married life. Without going that far, she gave her first son an apartment when he got married three years ago. And even Ali had a car when he came of age. 
without getting, well, too much into it, that showed that she was both a good mother and a woman who was not afraid to do checks up to six or seven digits. I often told Ali about all the expenses that we would have, but he would tell me not to worry about them as his mom would not let us down in any situation. I did get a touch on one sensitive point, though. Religion. And in that department, there's a lot to talk about. Although Ali does not really profess it as much, you can tell his family is pretty orthodox. So they would not be, or at least his mom would not be willing to accept a Christian and to their rankings. Even his older brother found himself a Muslim girl to avoid that sort of conflict in the family. I'm willing to help support and understand my husband in every sense of the word, but when something like people's beliefs are affected, well, I don't want to sound bold, but that is an issue that breaks strong relationships. I can only wait for a moment to see what might happen between the two of us. Update number one. Family tensions have become noticeably more complicated. Ollie now lives in a conflict with his mother, and we're about to postpone the wedding to allow a bit more time before the two of them settle their matters. When he asked his mother what's going on, she says she won't accept a girl like me to spend the rest of her days with him. Let's see. I'm quite tolerant of their beliefs and customs I've researched and, even from the time of the dinner, tried to encourage Ollie's religion more. I pray with them whenever needed to have learning the most important terminologies of the religion. Sometimes I even ask Ollie, pretending not to know when in fact I do too much research on the subject. That is, I've put some effort into doing so to fall better graces with his mom and him. But his mother is deaf and ignorant, saying that if I do not convert, she will not let her son get married. Of course, it's hard to stand up to her since Ollie still lives there, and we need some financial support to be able to buy our own roof over our heads. If his mother took him out of the place, we would be lost. The situation has drained me physically and emotionally, with Ollie doing everything he can to keep me sane for as long as possible. Gosh, yes. I even gave my handouts and readjusted expenses so I could do it without remorse. At work, they said, and I quote, Why don't you just convert if you've come so far in understanding the religion anyways? Well, I told them that it would involve a lot of things, and it would not be in line with my values, to be honest. I would be changing my way of being and believing just because of a person. I still remember my grandmother on her deathbed saying to me, God bless you, which touched my soul. Maybe Christianity is not it. Maybe I'm not the most devout, but I love Ollie very much, that I know, and I wish I had a way to be with him without his mother criticizing us at every single turn. I have not spoken to that woman again, but I'm not looking forward to it either. Until then, the wedding is postponed until further notice. Some time ago, Ollie suggested an idea to me. Why doesn't your mother talk to your mom? But just as I said yes to her marriage proposal so quickly, I was almost shouting no to him. It would be colliding two opposite worlds, and that terrifies me too much, to the point of calling off the wedding outright. This topic fills me with anxiety, and the last thing I need from this is to get anxious. I would like to close my eyes and wake up in a world with no religions and no interfering with the most beautiful day of my life. At this point, I don't see how we can even pull off a wedding without having to go through some awkward events. And... Have everyone be happy. I just can't. Update number two. Okay, this is a short update, but very, very full of anger. My, quote, future mother-in-law, besides having the pharmacy business, also has a radio show. Where she talks with her friends about different topics and stuff around town. They are a bunch of ladies in their 50s who talk about whatever hot gossip comes up. Anyways, they're incredibly popular. To the point where restaurants put them up as a phono noise. Crazy, I know. And well, guess the topic of their conversation? My son is marrying an outsider. She started talking about how one of her sons, as if half the city doesn't know about her family, was, quote, interested. And a Christian girl, I don't understand a lot of stuff on the show. She says her son is, quote, interested in me. But the title is that he's going to marry me. It makes no sense at all. 
Also, gossiping on the radio is not in keeping with the stauntly professed practice of her religion. Besides, and this is the point that bothers me the most, there are Christian friends on the program. Guys, it lacks some sense, doesn't it? And the worst part of the whole thing is they just support the woman. I mean, do they even know that she's degenerating what they think? I feel it's something against me more than just because I have a different religion. It's now listening to a bunch of 50-year-old something women throwing the most bigoted comments into a microphone, saying that this is immoral and sacrilegious and that each religion should be its kind. But only if it matters of love because nothing prevents them from staying on the air together, right? And it's that little by little in the program that the woman, I don't even want to call her my mother-in-law, because that would denote some sympathy, shows that she's actually against the wedding of her son, both for intolerance and for what people will say, since all her friends, lapdogs, who respond yes to everything she says, agree with everything that she says, even offering tale examples of past experiences. Like, for instance, one said she dated a Buddhist, and that it was the most peaceful relationship in the world, and that's why she didn't like it. She wanted chaos. My mother-in-law is only interested in appearance, and if the owner of the pharmacy chain looks weak, something must be wrong with this world, she says. Ollie tells me not to pay attention to it, but the program is listened to by many people, and they know perfectly well who she is, so... Seeing me next to him, everyone will start whispering about it, and I'm not one of those who likes to be under the spotlight. Now, I have to deal with these kind of scenarios, which seem so unreal to me. At one point, someone who I won't say said to me, why don't I just sue the lady for intolerance of religious beliefs or something like that? The truth is that it would not be bad. Of course, I'm not going to do it because... <laughs> She's the mother of my boyfriend, duh, ah, and future husband, but there's no lack of desire. I've insisted that Ali talk to his father and brother since they have more, quote, presence in the family household, at least in the general decision-making, I guess. But he always dodges the issue, saying that they're always busy with their stuff and that they would not have time for something like that. If I'm being honest... This whole thing has been demotivating, and to the point I feel so bad about the thoughts that I'm having, since Ali is the best boyfriend I've ever had. And I feel like there aren't two like him. But these are things that are all out of our hands, and I can't let them go. Converting to Islam may sound simple, right? But when we have no convictions of our own and go by what others say, well, we end up being that lady if you know what I mean. Update number three, a year has passed. I must apologize to you all for the time I've made you wait. I won't say it was easy, but at least I've managed to have some peace of mind regarding my situation over it. When I come back to the page, I realized that many of you were writing to me to know how everything turned out. If I had continued with Ollie and what had happened with my mother-in-law, well, I hope you're prepared for a long story from where I was. A kind of defamation campaign has started against me, where I was accused of wanting to change my fiancé's values, which was false. That woman kept talking trash about our relationship left and right and center, and everyone began to change their opinion of me. In the stores, on the streets, in the bars, I even stopped going into the pharmacies for fear that something bad would happen, like, and I quote... Uh, you're not welcome in this establishment, or something like that. I felt like public enemy number one. Ali, while he tried to help me through the whole ordeal, is the only one who I can say could have had a harder time than me, as he lived from war to war with his mother, trying to seek shelter from my family and even some of his. Some time ago, he spoke with his father and brother when they were still in Europe. They returned just a few months ago, stayed another month, and went to Asia. They've been there ever since. And they too joined the conflict. His brother was the one who advocated for him the most, since the father did not care, and I quote, Ah, uh, if the boy wants to marry even a penguin, uh, let him, it's his life. 
said the man who, although he was not the best with words or with empathetic tact towards other people, at least had a good point and liked to profess, quote, live and let live. But the mother, with deaf ears, denied understanding and respect and said that we could do as we please, but not count on her blessing. At first, Ollie's brother was thrilled, saying we finally had the green light for the wedding. But neither of us felt good knowing this. We wanted it to be something everyone would be happy about, even if it was a bit too much to ask. Things got worse when someone else added to the formula. Ollie's next brother, Nat, only a couple of years younger than him, uh, bought an atheist girl to the house, claiming she was his new girlfriend, and uh, that's when all hell broke loose, guys. Listen up. Ollie used to stay at my house on several occasions, returning to him from time to time, and he tells me that on the day that happened, the night when he introduced me to the family was a field of roses. <laughs> In comparison, I mean, guys, the mother exploded and started attacking the girl to the point of almost kicking her son and his girlfriend out of the house. It was then that she lost the war. All of her children began to look down upon her and began to detach themselves from the family. During the radio show, she started to become more aggressive and condemned many of the things that, quote, the new generation were doing. But this was the moment when everything started to go downhill for her. You see, we live in an increasingly mixed world, and we can tolerate each other's thoughts as long as they don't affect our own. And anyone who is intolerant, well, let's just say they're not doing very well. I remember one occasion when we were in a store that had the radio program on the air, and I heard the lady saying, Atheism? Nothing more stupid. And I heard the girl next to me saying, Stupid her, she was having a conversation with her companion, telling her about how the program had changed for the worse because of that lady, and I listened to the comments and realized that this was not so far from reality. Little by little, the program on the air was losing an audience. In a restaurant that I usually frequent with Ali and some friends, where they always showed the ladies' program. They stopped showing it, and when we asked why, the owner told us that they were not going to show programs that were intolerant to their clientele. I admit that it made me smile a little on the inside. Everyone started talking bad about the show, to the point where it stopped having followers, Figuratively and literally, uh, because I remember well that they had at least 9,000 followers in the network, only to now have about 5,000 the last time I checked. Do you know what it's like to lose 4,000 followers in just a few months? That is media death. And just as she attacked us with everything, I, uh, let's just say, had a little revenge, but at a high cost. She started to realize the negative impact on the show, and her friends started attacking her after that. Ali told me behind the scenes, and it really hurt the image they were trying to convey. I found it very unpleasant that it was for that very reason, that the woman had a significant change in her behavior. Of course, I would also like to believe that it was out of love for her children, but I refer to the evidence and say that because she asked us to show up at the house to talk, and it was then that she, quote, apologized, saying she was wrong and a bunch of other things. But to me, the apology rang somewhat false from the beginning. But Ali ended up crying and hugging her mother, and that's when I understood that I also had to do my part in the conversation. So, after a rather extensive process, I'd finally made peace with my mother-in-law. Everything seemed to have worked out, and that's when we moved on to the topic of the wedding planning. Something that I admit I was quite excited about was when the lady finally said that she would help us pay for everything and that we did not have to worry about nothing. It was then that I imagined the wedding of my dreams, with big decorations, lots of lighting, and even a grass carpet. I don't know why, but I've always liked them. Anyways, the months of preparation began at least three months where every day we had to be on top of everything. Music, decorations, venue, guest, food, acting, talk, security, everything. It was really quite a stressful time to the point where I almost felt like I was going to faint at any moment. But at the end of the day, we managed to complete everything on time and we scheduled the evening for August 26th, the date Ollie and I had our first kiss. 
Even her father and brother were coming for the celebration. They were staying for a couple of days and going back to Asia. How come they even publicized the wedding on the radio show? <laughs> this magnificent redemption on the part of, quote, rehabilitated mother-in-law made the show increase their ratings? Now, people's comments were that everything had improved and there was more fluency in speech. I even got to listen to one of her episodes and I could hear her new voice more tolerant, more peaceful, as if she was really a mother concerned about her kids and not about what people would say about her. Our wedding, as I said some time ago, rereading everything I wrote previously, was going to just be civil ceremony, right? Only with all the paraphernalia of a religious wedding. Well, however, the day that the event came, and it's hard for me to write this part because that's when everything went to hell. I'm not lying when I tell you that it was the most stressful day of my life. I had not seen Ollie for three days, and my palms were sweating profusely. However, things started to go downhill when one of the bridesmaids, one of Ollie's high school friends, commented to me that at the end of it all, she thought the idea of the Islamic wedding was great. Of course, you might have understood the confusion I had at the time, so I started asking, um, what do you mean, Islamic wedding? And more than one told me that Ollie's mom had coordinated everything to be Islamic-themed bringing to uh, an Awali to officiate the reunion. It was then that I fainted, uh, felt a faint moment. I stormed through the place with my wedding gown already on, half made up, looking for Ollie's mother to give me a bit of an explanation. When I found her, she only told me that everything was already set up and that I could not take it back. I said that I had not authorized any of that, but she replied that Ali had given his consent and that his word, being the man in the relationship, had to be kept. I think that was the most furious moment of my life. And I started screaming and taking off my wedding suit, being careful not to tear it, of course, and asking to see Ali immediately. We broke tradition. I told him that I was not willing to get married under these conditions, and that's when everything went sour. He told me that they were already so far along and canceling the wedding would mean losing so much money. I told him it was not even a question of money, it was a question of principles. And I gave him a choice in the most classic teenage drama style. It was either the wedding or me. You choose, pal. And well, you know what his decision was. The following months were bitter because a certain lady decided to sue me for perjury and swindling. Having cancelled the wedding, many of the services that were paid for were lost, and that was a big financial blow to her family. They tried to sue me, but with a small sample of the contracts, what at no point did it specify that it was going to be an Islamic wedding. It was enough for the lawsuit to be thrown out. Moreover, at one point, I thought about countersuing her for sabotaging my wedding for a religious intolerance, but out of mere respect, I did not. The matter escalated to public knowledge and was commented on and discussed on social media, until it became one of the most trending talked-about media events of the season in our little town. But for me, none of that mattered anymore, because in the end, I won the lawsuit and I did my own bit of exposing this woman on social media. My, quote, ex-mother-in-law was a bigot. Post, it managed to get shared and commented on by many, many people, but I decided to delete it after I ended up seeing how badly their business did. And even though I'm no longer with Ollie, that's right, no longer with him, who I thought was the man of my dreams, at least I never wished ill on him. After all, that woman brought it all upon herself. Alright guys, so this story was absolutely insane. There's a couple points that I want to touch on. The number one being the end of the story. It just seemed like OP and Ollie were so deeply in love. And we come to find out that OP is no longer with Ollie. And it just makes me wonder, all this mess that the mother-in-law caused... Why would she even get involved in the relationship so deeply? So my question to you guys is this. If it wasn't for mother-in-law driving such a wedge in between the two of them, 
Do you think that Ollie and OP would still be together, married with a family to this day? It makes you wonder. So drop your comments down below in the comment section. Let's talk about this one. I'll be honest with you guys though. The comments from the original post and the updates, they did not like the mother-in-law in today's story. Anyways, let's discuss it, guys. My name's Mr. Redito. I narrate stories every single day. If you want to be a part of these stories, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one. And remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.